When it comes to lizards, size isn't everything, but big lizards are fun. You can pick them up and hold them like you would a dog. They're charismatic and you can almost see the light of itty bitty thoughts behind their eyes. The enormous pair of eyes you may not be able to detect intelligence behind though are those of the geckos. The largest gecko alive today, this ornery wrinkly beast has a pair of some of the most cosmic eyes that reflect no thoughts, head empty. However, this gecko isn't the largest to ever live. Let's take a look at the true record holder and its long, bizarre, and enigmatic history. Geckos, on top of being easily the cutest and freakiest lizards on the planet, are the most species-rich group of lizards. According to who you consult, there are between 1,500 and 2,150 described species, ranging from fat-tailed desert varieties to the glass-crawling species you may be most familiar with, to an entire group of legless forms that slither across Australia and its sister islands. The geckos are found worldwide where reptiles are found and are defined by a general conservativeness in their body plans across regions, but with extreme local endemism and specializations. Some regional radiations of geckos exhibit notable diversity in body form and life history in addition to high species richness. The Diplodactylidae family is one example. The roughly 190 species of diplodactylid geckos are restricted to Australia, New Caledonia, and New Zealand, and form a substantial proportion of the reptile fauna in each of these regions. New Caledonian and New Zealand geckos each constitute separate, unrelated radiations. Diplodactylids occur in habitats ranging from desert to grassland to forests. They may be terrestrial, rock-dwelling, or arboreal, may be nocturnal or diurnal, and vary greatly in external characteristics such as body size, tail shape, pupil type, and possession and type of toe pads, interdigital webbing, and skin flaps. One extreme example of the diplodactylids is the largest living gecko, the New Caledonian Rachodactylus lichianus. New Caledonian giant gecko, leeches giant gecko, lichianus gecko, or what the reptile hobbyists call leeches. These adorable pudgy and wrinkly beasts can measure up to an incredible 14 to 17 inches, 360 to 430 millimeters in length and weigh as much as 250 to 500 grams. Maybe compared to other lizards, this isn't particularly massive, but it is for geckos. Geckos are usually as long as the average human hand, with plenty that are way, way, way smaller. In fact, the smallest geckos are some of the smallest lizards, reptiles, and backboned animals on the planet, exemplified by the dwarf geckos of the Spherodactylus genus. However, the lychee is not the largest gecko to ever live. The largest gecko to ever live is extinct and unfortunately only recently. The title belongs to Delcourt's giant gecko, Hoplodactylus delcorti, which was described from a single specimen rediscovered among the collections of the Natural History Museum of Marseille, France in the late 1970s. The history of this chonker is quite interesting. According to a 1986 paper by Aaron Bauer and Anthony Russell, there was an 1873 report made by Major William Gulbert Mayer, a soldier with the Colonial Defense Force and the New Zealand Militia, in which he recounted the story told to him by a Maori chief. The chief said that, in 1870, he had killed a kawekaweao he found under the bark of a dead rata tree in the Waimana Valley in Te Uerera on the North Island of New Zealand. The kawekaweao is a large lizard of Maori legend. The Maori tradition has several references to different kinds of large reptiles which lived in the dense forests. Kumi and Ngarara are believed to be mythical. The Tuatara is now known to be a relic from the dinosaur era, but what was Kawekaweao? Kawekaweao were reported from widespread localities in the northern half of the North Island, particularly the creatively named Northland. 
The animal was variously described as being amphibious, ground-dwelling, a tree-dweller, or even being able to fly. The most often repeated description was of a lizard about two feet long that was arboreal. The Maori chief's report was the only documented report of anyone ever seeing a kawekaweao alive. William Mayer reported the chief's description of the animal as being two feet long and as thick as a man's wrist, color brown, striped longitudinally with dull red. Despite these observations, no museum specimens of the Kawekawea were known to be collected, no scientific description was written, and the reports of Buller and Mayer were the last to specifically refer to it. By the middle of the 20th century, there were doubts that Kawekawea had ever been a biological reality, and it lapsed back into myth and legend. Then, in 1979, Alain Delcourt, a curator at the Natural History Museum in Marseille, France, discovered in the museum's zoological collections a mounted specimen of a huge gecko. At a monstrous total length of 60 centimeters, 23.6 inches, the specimen is about 50% longer than the largest recorded lychee. Its preservation is unusual for reptiles, which are typically preserved whole in spirits. Instead, the specimen was eviscerated, dried, and mounted, lacking the internal organs and most of the axial skeleton, but possessing the skull and appendicular skeleton. This state of preservation hinders assessment of some anatomical characteristics and makes trying to carbon date the critter unreliable. Sadly, this specimen had no information with it indicating where, when, and by whom it had been collected. There isn't even any indication of when it arrived at the museum, although it was known to be present in 1902 when the collections were recatalogued. When and how the Marseille specimen even got to France is unknown. French expeditions have visited New Zealand since the earliest times of European exploration. There have been French missions and French settlements. Marseille was regarded as the gateway to the Orient and was the home port for most voyages to this part of the world. Biological specimens from collectors and curios from seamen would pass through Marseille on their way into France. The huge gecko was probably acquired by the museum between 1833 and 1869, a period for which all the records have been lost. Realizing the significance of the specimen, Delcourt sent photographs of his find to America for possible identification. These eventually came to the attention of Aaron Bauer and Tony Russell, specialists in gecko taxonomy. From close examination of its scales and skeleton, Bauer and Russell were able to determine that the specimen in Marseille belonged to a group of geckos, the Carphodactylinae, that occur only in New Zealand, New Caledonia, and the eastern seaboard of Australia. Furthermore, they were certain that it was a species of Hoplodactylus, a genus known only from New Zealand. To obtain further evidence, Bauer visited New Zealand in 1984 to examine other Hoplodactylus species and was astonished to discover the Maori and early Pakea accounts of large forest lizards. In 1986, the Bauer and Russell team published their findings on the gecko. They named the Massey specimen Hoplodactylus delcorti in honor of its discoverer. There was sufficient evidence for them to conclude that the giant gecko belonged to the family Diplodactylidae, likely a member of the New Zealand genus Hoplodactylus. The authors also considered a New Caledonian origin, but ultimately placed the specimen in Hoplodactylus based on color pattern and toe anatomy. In the 1994 book, Ancient DNA, the chapter DNA from Museum Specimens by Alan Cooper details the attempts to extract DNA from the sole known specimen of the gecko. It was unfortunately unsuccessful. Then, in 2016, Trevor Worthy published a review of the fossil record of New Zealand lizards in the New Zealand Lizards book. In this review, he also reviews the then-available information about the Delcourt gecko and suggested that the specimen originated on an island of New Caledonia rather than New Zealand. Due to a lack of fossil evidence for the lizard in New Zealand caves, despite abundant remains of all other known species of New Zealand gecko. 
Given the uncertainty surrounding the geographic origin and evolutionary relationships of Haplodactus delcordi, a new team of American researchers from Michigan, Louisiana, Florida, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Texas, Wisconsin, and Minnesota sought to obtain sequence data to test for what the hell this lizard actually was. They published their work in scientific reports in June of 2023. Like all who came before them, the 2023 team tried to get some usable DNA out of this poor museum specimen. Unlike past workers, the 2023 team did it a little differently. The only original untarnished or uncontaminated biological material in the stuffed specimen is its bones, so that's what the team targeted. They successfully obtained DNA from the left femur and isolated that DNA with reagents, tools, and laboratory facilities that had no prior contact with gecko samples. A rotary drill and grinding bit were used to produce 50 milligrams of bone powder from the interior of the bone shaft, and from there, they were able to use DNA genomic tech to get the usable DNA. This shows that even when you have shoddy museum specimens to work with that have destroyed biological material, you can still use the bones to maybe get some usable stuff out of it. So what did they find out about this big lizard? The DNA tests and phylogenetic analyses using morphology found that Hoplodactylus delcorti wasn't even from New Zealand. It's not the legendary Kawekaweao, it's from New Caledonia, but still belongs to the Diplodactylidae family, as had been hypothesized this whole time. As such, it was also not super closely related to the Haplodactylus genus, and the 2023 team found that it needed its own genus. So they renamed the gecko Gigarchanum delcorti. The new genus name is made up of Gigas for big and Arcanum for secret or mystery. The biogeographic analysis technically found Gygarchanum to at least have had an ancestor in New Caledonia, with the most likely explanation being that it was also from there. Long-distance dispersal events in the Diplodactylidae family seem rarer than in the Gekinoid geckos, where there are numerous examples of transoceanic dispersals. The difference might be because of reproductive differences. You see, gecanoid geckos have sticky, hard-shelled eggs that keep salt water out, making them great at being laid in potential flotsam and dispersing to new places. In contrast, diplodactylids, presumably including the big chubby gecko and its recent ancestors, either have parchment-shelled eggs or give birth to live young. Based on the limited number of examples of long-distance dispersal among diplodactylids, it's concluded that Gygarchanum delcorti is most likely to have occurred in New Caledonia. However, without direct physical evidence tying the single known specimen to a place or the discovery of additional fossil, subfossil, or living remains, it cannot be ruled out that the species instead inhabited another landmass in the Southwest Pacific, such as the Loyalty Islands or, you know, New Zealand. Though colonization of New Zealand would require a successful dispersal and adaptation to a cooler climate. Thus far, detailed investigations of the subfossil reptile assemblages of New Zealand, New Caledonia, and the Loyalty Islands have not yielded Gekoten remains, unambiguously referable to Gygarchanum delcorti. One subfossil bone from New Zealand has been interpreted as a gecko cloacal bone of a size consistent with it, but alternate interpretations have also been proposed. Additional field or historical work or alternative laboratory approaches, such as trace geochemical or soil analysis, are still needed to clarify the geographic origin of this gecko and determine whether another species is the best candidate for the identity of the Kawekaweao of New Zealand. To date, no living or extinct reptiles known from New Zealand match descriptions of the body size and color of the Kawekaweao more closely than Gygarchanum delcorti. Bauer and Russell came up with some ideas for the biology of this critter, but all of their suggestions were based on the lizard being closely related to New Zealand diplodactylids. For example, they speculated that it may have occupied the crowns of cowrie trees. Combined with the inaccessibility of this habitat, kari forests were shrinking even before the arrival of humans in New Zealand, providing a plausible reason for the fact that only a single specimen is known. 
although its style of preparation suggests it was collected before terrestrial habitats in either New Caledonia or New Zealand had been heavily impacted by European settlement. Regardless, the presence of broad toe pads and well-developed claws suggest it was a climbing species, likely on trees rather than rocks. It was almost certainly nocturnal, like all of its New Caledonian relatives as well as all New Zealand diplodactylids, exclusive of the distinctive green geckos of the genus Nautinus. Its teeth are not exceptional, suggesting a generalized arthropod diet, but it seems likely given its size that this would have been supplemented by vertebrate prey, and seasonally by fruit, as has been documented in New Caledonian giant geckos. Gygarchanum's reproduction is unknowable given the preservation method of the only known specimen. Bauer and Russell assumed it to be live-bearing, in line with all New Zealand diplodactylids, but viviparity is also known for two species of the Rhacodactylus genus and cannot be excluded on the basis of its inclusion in the New Caledonian lineage. Whether egg-laying or live-bearing, a clutch or litter size of two is almost certain, as this is fixed in both island lineages of diplodactylids regardless of size. In either case, the eggs or hatchlings would likely have been vulnerable to rodent predation. Whatever its biological attributes, it is clear that despite its huge size, Gygarchanum delcorti was extinct or exceedingly rare by the time of European colonization of the Southwest Pacific, and that its lifestyle and habitat left it largely or entirely unknown to the pre-European settlers of the region. The brief description of the Maori Koekoeau, if indeed referring to this species, finds the only evidence besides the unique specimen that this magnificent lizard ever existed. Gone, and almost forgotten, but not quite. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.